Hello, and welcome to Continuum's third episode of our web series, Press Play. I'm Ryan Scott, Artistic Director and Percussionist. Since 1985, Continuum has had the incredible fortune of exploring new ideas in music in Toronto, which is home to many Indigenous people from across Turtle Island and has been a site of human activity for more than 15,000 years. This land is the territory of the Petun First Nations, the Seneca, and most recently the Mississaugas of the Credit River. This territory was the subject of the Dish With One Spoon Wampum Belt Covenant, an agreement between the Haudenosaunee Confederacy and the Confederacy of the Ojibwe and allied nations to peaceably share and care for the resources around the Great Lakes. We are enormously grateful for the generosity of all Indigenous people who share this land with us and allow us to live and work here as uninvited guests. I write uh, classical music um, with uh, an African twist. There's so much destruction and negativity in the world. It's nice to be a creator. Music is, I think, the most amazing source of solace ever. My Africa is creative. My Africa is original and full of ideas. My name is Bongani Ndodana Breen. I'm a composer from Cape Town in South Africa. In the early 2000s, there was a most interesting young man who attended every concert in Toronto. His name was Bongani Undodana Breen, and he had huge plans and he knew how to make good friends. First, he started Ensemble Noir. There we all are back in 2004. When Bongani told me he wanted us to tour to Africa, I said, sounds good. But before I knew it, I was on a plane with my colleagues to perform in Accra, Ghana, Lagos, Nigeria, and then on to South Africa and Johannesburg, Pretoria and Cape Town. I will never forget that experience and all that Bongani gave to me as a young artist. After leaving Toronto and not surprisingly, Bongani has become an international superstar. He has written a wide range of music encompassing symphonic work and opera. He has received commissions from the Wigmore Hall, Vancouver Recital Society, Madame Walker Theatre, Hong Kong Arts Festival, Luminato Festival and the Haydn Festival. As you will hear now, he is the composer of Harmonia Ubuntu, commissioned for and performed by the Minnesota Orchestra, and Winnie, the opera based on the life of Winnie Mandela. <laughs> Dr. Undodana Breen holds a PhD in composition from Rhodes University. He was awarded the Standard Bank Young Artists Award in 1998 and was one of the Mail and Guardian 200 Young South Africans of 2011. Today we will experience a new side of Bongani in Imbila, a Canadian premiere in which he sets a traditional Hosha folktale for children and as we will learn traditionally known as an insomi to music. I was delighted to catch up with Bongani after these many years and to learn more about the piece from him directly. Imbila is um, a very unusual animal that you find in the mountains, uh, especially in Table Mountain here in South Africa in Cape Town. Um, the scientific name for it is Rock uh, Hyrax, H-Y-R-A-X. But in my culture, in Hosa culture, is, uh, it's, it's called Imbila but commonly in South African English is called a dasi. The story, which basically is part of Kosa folklore, um, um, you know, in my culture, there are these stories called inzomi, uh, which are which usually like a grandmother or some form of elder will tell around the campfire 
all like late at night. Uh, this is the day before Nickelodeon and Disney, by the way. <laughs> um, and we'll tell the younger children. Um, and I, I had, was fortunate enough actually to have two great aunts uh, when we lived on a farm who were my grandmother's sisters, they were, they were quite elderly. And they enjoyed telling us all these folk tales. So this one is, is, is a folk tale that comes from that like real life setting of, of my upbringing when I was very, very young. There's always some form of uh, parable or um, uh, lesson in, in there um, uh, for people. And this one is actually about procrastination. Um, the uh, Imbila uh, doesn't have a tail. And so the story is about how this little animal when the tales were about, you know, the beginning, <laughs> uh, when animals were being created, it procrastinated, you know, the baboons went and had their tail, went, went to have their tails, and the birds went, um, and, and the elephants went, and, I mean, it, it's all narrated. This, this little fellow was like lying in the sun on the rock saying, yeah, I'll go tomorrow, you know, <laughs> like it'll be less of a cue. And by the time he gets there, you know, the gig is up you know, the shop is closed, <laughs> so he gets no tail. So this is a story uh, that reminds young African children, um, don't wait for tomorrow to do what you can do today. was young. The first animals lived in Africa, in a land filled with magical possibilities and stories. Stories that have been handed down from the first people who understood the stories that the animals told to them all the way to us today. And today you shall hear one of those very stories the story of Imbila the Rock Dassi. Look, there is Imbila. Can you see him? Over there. He's hiding in the rocks. Can you see him? Can you see him too? <laughs> is again. He is brown and furry and small. He has black eyes and a tiny, tiny nose and four little legs with pads on the feet, perfect for slippery, steep rocks. He looks almost like a big mouse, except he has no tail. Why does Imbela have no tail? Many years ago, my Gogo told me the story of why Imbela has no tail, as she was told herself many years before that. And now, it is your turn today to hear the story. Once upon a time, Imbela was sitting on the high rocks, basking in the hot African sun, when suddenly he saw many, many animals. They were all marching through the field below him. (laughs) 
In the front were the small animals. They were all happy and jumping. Some were as small as Imbila, others had four legs and horns and ran very, very fast and could jump very high. They were led by Infine, the dancing baboon. He always liked to lead the dance in front of all the animals. Imbila saw all this and went down to greet his friends. He asked Imfane, Why is everybody so excited and where are you all going to? Imfane looked at him surprised. Oh, Imbila, don't you know? Today we are to go to the river where Mamlambo, the river spirit, will give us each a tail to wear so we can hang on trees, walk without falling, swap the flies, and be made beautiful. Come and march with us. Imbila shook his head. That sounds nice, he said, but I want to lie here and enjoy the warm sun today. Maybe later, after the midday meal, I will come. So the animals marched on and Imbila went back to the rocks to lie in the sun, enjoying how warm it was. away in the distance, the animals could barely be seen as they marched on. The warmth of the African sun felt so good to Imbila as he stood up to stretch and yawn. Oh, they don't know how fine it feels to relax in the sun rather than march all day, he thought. Then he saw more animals. These were big animals, moving very, very slowly. There was an elephant, a rhino, a buffalo, and a giraffe. They all were marching too in their stately strides. He called down to greet them and saw that the elephant was his friend Unglovu. Unglovu knew it was a long way for the little Dasi to march and kindly asked Imbila to climb up on her back and go with them to get a tail. Imbila shook his head again. He thought that after the midday meal, he would like to go and play in the shade of the marula tree and enjoy its delicious fruit for dessert. So told he Unglovu. Maybe just before the sunset, when the birds sing, that's when I will go to the river to get my tail. Then Unglovu and the other large animals continued their slow march away towards the river, leaving Imbila to his plans.
As the sun was about to set, the birds in the trees started their song. They too were flying to the river to sing with the frogs for Mamlambo, as this was such a special day. They knew they would also get their own tails from the river spirit to match their feathers. Imbila closed his eyes, savoring the last taste of the succulent marula fruit he had just eaten. He felt so full and lazy. He couldn't even dream of starting a long march to the river. Imbila told himself that Mamlambo would surely understand. <laughs> In the distance, Mamlembo, the river spirit, began her magic ritual. No one knew what was going to happen. She rose from the water and beat her great stick on the river bank. The earth rumbled. Nothing happened to the animals at first. Then Umfene noticed that the littlest of the animals, the mice, were running around with tails. Now all the animals looked behind their backs and saw they too had tails. Amazed, they started dancing all together with happiness and joy. was not bothered by all this noise from the river. He was so tired and only wanted to go to bed. He promised himself he would go to the river spirit early the next day. Then he would get his own very, very special tale. He looked up at the night sky and saw the first of the evening stars. Imbila's eyes grew heavy with sleep and he smiled and fell into a world of dreams. He dreamed of what his own special tale would look like. Thank you. 
he woke up early the next morning and started his own march from his home in the high rocks. He marched all the way by himself down the long path to go and see the river spirit. everywhere but the river was empty except for the fishes swimming they were enjoying their new tails then Imbilla saw the birds high above were flying also with beautiful tails in the distance he could see Imfene and all the other animals admiring their special tails Imbilla was sad. I should have come earlier, he said to himself. When the other animals saw that he was sad, they came quickly to him. You are still our friend, even though you don't have a tail, cried Mfene. Nglovu trumpeted in agreement, and they all danced with Imbila as they accompanied him all the way back to his home in the high rocks. He learned a lesson he never forgot. Don't leave for tomorrow what you can do today. And that is the story of why Imbilla has no tail. <laughs> Let's all dance together like Imbilla and his friends. Thank you for watching episode three of Press Play, and thank you especially to Roma and to Nikki for sharing your artistry with us. You may recall Nikki from our Hatch episodes earlier this summer, and you'll be hearing again from Roma in an upcoming episode of Press Play. At the end of my conversation with Bongani, we spoke about the possibility of bringing him back to Toronto. In the years to come, I will co-curate a continuum concert with him focusing on all the incredible new music coming from African composers. And who knows, knowing Bongani, maybe we'll all find ourselves in Accra again. Stay tuned for episode four of Press Play, which features an exploration of new technology and music with the amazing Amy Brandon joining us from Truro, Nova Scotia. It will be broadcast on November 26th at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Visit our website, www.continuummusic.ca, for more details on that episode. And we'll be featuring a downloadable app that Amy just unveiled at the Hauriamas Festival in Utrecht, so you can play along with us on that episode from home. On our website, you will also find it very easy to find our social media profiles and to sign up for newsletters. On the homepage, there is a support button front and center. Please consider making a donation now. And thanks for watching. <laughs>